Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Sound Sultan. And you'll be seeing me in a whole new toga. Because a lot of people have not seen me in this light. But I have never denied the fact that I'm a Muslim and I'm proud to be one. So I'm welcoming you to a new show. It's called Metro Mail. Now on Metro Mail, I will be discussing with some spectacular Muslim men about social issues as it affects them and their Islam. Now, one thing for sure is on this show, they're just regular guys like you. So we'll be expecting your feedback and your experiences and opinions on issues that we'll be discussing. On this journey, or should I call it road trip, as we say in music, I have my brothers with me, the professionals in the various fields, and they'll be sharing their experience and opinions on issues that we'll be discussing on Metro Mail. And now, today, we're discussing about work-life balance how men juggle work, business, family, and social life, or should I say social media life, like this. Um, after the break, I will be introducing my panelists. So join me when I come back on Metro Mail. You are welcome back. Sound Sultan here, and the show is Metro Mail, if you're just joining us. I said before that my panelists will be joining me here, and I'm glad to welcome my brother. Ahmad Oyekon. And my brother. Bizu Oshikoya, Saeed Oshikoya. Hmm. What's your Muslim name? You haven't told us. Abdul Ghani Fasasi. Oh, to the Yoruba people. Ghani. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're welcome to Metro Mail. And the topic before us today is work life. Balance. So, I would like to start by just throwing it open and saying everybody that knows Sound Sultan knows my work. And I'm a musician, <laughs> entertainer. <laughs> you know, I said, I did, I said everybody that knows Sound Sultan knows my work. Mm -hmm. So, if you know Sound Sultan, you don't know my work. Then I'm just, <laughs> you don't I know, know Sound Sultan. I don't, you don't know Sound Sultan. <laughs> so, I mean, what um, I would say, I will not go too in depth. Yet, so that I'll allow you guys, you know, throw your own opinions out there. But I'll just say my own. I feel like in, on this set, too, my own is the most tasking when it comes to balancing my work and Islam. Now, I would like you to share. To, to share my opinion. Thank you, my brother. As he's already claimed first position, <laughs> <laughs> saying his work is the most tasking. Uh, my opinion is different. I think each one of us faces different challenges in our work, our hustle, yeah. uh, our life, and the way we try to balance it with family and uh, socializing immediate family, external family, and get that balance. That balance is very important because uh, without that balance, everything is out of the window. Very true. Yes. Um, work is a very important thing we have to get involved in and we have to be part of. Without work, uh, what are they? <laughs> so, but we cannot overwork ourselves. We say all work and no play, big jack, a dull boy. So we've got work we have to do right now in our present circumstances and our lives now. It's quite different from back in the days when our parents were growing up. Uh, back then it was a 8 to 4.30 or 8 to 3.30. Our parents were usually really back home by 4, yeah. used to pray as with us, but 4.30 they were home. Mm -hmm. But the worst case, 5 o'clock they were home. So, after work, you had your dad to sit down, find out how your school was going, how things were going. But now, with the demands and pressure on us, we young men and couples and male, young males are going through a lot. Because you have the family pressure, you've got family uh, demands. The demands are quite different from back in the days now. So mm -hmm. we have to find a way of adapting and balancing our life. Um, you will find out that most people nowadays, even with the so-called good jobs, have to work extra, just be able to give themselves and their family the little comforts or the good things of life. Exactly. 
Yeah, so we, but what we have to put in the back of our mind is that if we, uh, at the end of it all, achieve what we want without getting that balance, uh, all our work is for nothing. When you say balance, is it the uh, religious balance or social balance? It's, it's both. Because without the religious balance, you don't have a bearing on the direction in life. And all what you do is based on the so-called direction and guidance a religion gives you. So whatever we do, we put the religious, our beliefs and ideals at the back of our mind, which guides us in where we want to go. Exactly. Also, we always have our families, which are the most important set to us and important things to us. And whatever we do, we claim we do it for them. All our work is for them. All our struggle is for them. And all what we want to achieve is for them. Mm -hmm. So if at the end of the day, we achieve that, and we are not part of it. It all makes it wasted for me. So we have to find a way we hustle, but we still give family, our wife, our kids, our immediate families, our external families, our in society, I mean, your neighborhood, that even the dean, the great ladder society, so they can get part of us. We cannot dedicate everything to the hustle, or we get consumed by the hustle. Mm. So that's just the way I see it, my take so from it. Thank me. you for speaking on behalf of a modern metro male. Mm. Yeah. So now you speak for yourself as regards to what you do for a living and how much balance and how much um, challenges you face trying to be a, a true Muslim and uphold Islam and the stock exchange and your work. Okay. Uh, what I do is, when I finished school and I was about to get into business, I went to talk to a couple of people. You know what you want to do? Let's send them out. And there was something important one of them said, which is a relative of mine. He said, yes, what you want to do is good, but I need you to meet someone. Someone that's been there and been through some of these things, so they can advise you, because what your challenge they're going to fa face will affect your fate. Mm. And it will be very difficult. Some might not be able to handle. Mm. But when you talk to people that have been there, they will help you and guide you. So what she did was introduce me to someone who has become my mentor. So someone I could discuss, because he's a Muslim too, and he's a top executive. So I could learn from him, and I could rub off him, and learn from some of the challenges they face. I can prepare myself for it. Mm. Well, you know, when you go through school, it's different from real life. Whatever they teach you in the classroom, when yeah. it comes to experience, it's a the whole it's, it's <laughs> new a different body. thing practically. Different. So yeah. when I saw him, we sat, he told me, you know, this is what your face said, you know, the usual stuff. You cannot take bribe, it's not right, uh, don't cheat people, you know, be straightforward, trust, integrity, all matter. I said, fine and good. Well, they've been telling us that before. Well, it's good to add more to it. Well, you, see, you find that when you have challenges, this is what, what one of the things Islam says, that it's a way of life. You cannot be a Muslim and exclude yourself from society because what you, Islam is teaching you is how to practice within society. Exactly. You know? So you start to find out that, look, the real struggle is when you're in society, mm -hmm. it's easier when you exclude yourself from society because you're not facing those challenges. But when you're in society and face those challenges, that's a test of faith. Okay. You, as a business person, you go... So Look, what, what experience have you had that's like the most uh, remarkable, the most challenging test of faith, uh, you know, the worst temptation that you've had to, you know, fight? The worst temptation we had, we usually fight as business people is cutting corners. You go and sit down with people, you're negotiating contracts, and uh, they make you offers, you know, like somebody wants to give you a contract and they're telling you, look, I'm going to offer you this contract based on the fact that at the end of the day, the contract comes out in your name, but you are not going to do the work. So it's, yeah. Seriously, it's, and some of this contract, because of my nature of job, has to do with the life of certain, people. of certain people and the safety of lives of certain people or organizations. So it's a very, sometimes you have, it's a very difficult choice to make. You've been here sitting down trying to lobby people, trying to get them to sit down with you and listen to you. And finally you get there and you feel like, look, I'm going to get, oh, my, everything I've done is coming to fruition now. And they throw you that bone. Yes, we'll give this to you. But yeah. we don't want you to do the work. Wow. We'll just share the money. 
and go. Then you think about it like, oh, wow, really? Not a bad idea, but then that, that's where that your religious belief starts to come in. Mm. It's easy money. Yes, we cannot sign, take it and go. But you know, the consequences, the consequences are very dire. And mm. Allah will always ask me, how do I live with my conscience? That, exactly. that, uh, yeah. I shall change people, organizations. Knowingly. knowingly. Not unknowingly. That's the word, knowingly. Yeah. And brother, people's lives are... I must give it to you. You are in first position right now because <laughs> I, the, the situation that you have there has to do with human life. Yeah, people would, if you do not do that advice. job, which, of course, I feel like for every job you have, there's always a joy you derive when you, you know, at the end of the service. Yes. It's not like you just get paid and then they tell you you're supposed to do something and you're not doing it. That is you know, correct. And sometimes I get paid for a show, and when maybe due to the you know the fault of the promoters, I don't get to perform. They're like, yeah, hey, keep the money, but I'm like, ah, it's fifty thousand people. Can, you know, that's, that's not exactly so. what it is, but not not the same. No, 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 same thing. So <laughs> you're, you're in first position for now. Thank you. I told for you now. so. I told you so. I went to Bizu. We're in the same field, but you see, you're more in depth, and you're more in the world as a free man, free agent. Yeah, yeah. So I know that peculiar oh, yeah. challenges. I mean, definitely there's a lot of challenges for someone like me, because even besides being in, being in the music industry, I also work in the nightlife industry. Mm. And where, obviously, to work in the nightlife industry, you know there's so many temptations. And if you're not strong in your faith and religion, like there's so many ways that you can peer pressure this can affect you. There's so much peer pressure that will affect you exactly. and you get tempted to, you know, try one or two things and make you backslide on your religion or your faith and things mm -hmm. like that. So, I mean, you just need to be very prayerful and strong about it because right. I know so many people that, I mean, because you get, you get to go to so many events where, okay, you have to drink or you have to mm. i remember one time when i had to travel with a, a alcohol brand because they flew some promoters to yeah, um, to, the to, the yeah. to go and see how the drink is made and stuff like that you know and then you have to taste and then obviously we somehow for you to say i don't drink so i had to find a way yeah, money to, from them exactly yeah. you know there's something like that that happened to me as well some vodka company guy the guy i don't know how you know he kind of like enjoyed my company and it's always like ah so ah, hey where you at uh, you know yeah, and yeah. every time we hang out you know the vodka drink is just like water so we have all these transparent glasses and he goes oh yeah let's fill it up so every time he feels minor <laughs> not knowing that i don't drink you know it would it would um, fill my cup up i had my stunt drinker <laughs> yes. one of my boys that was in town i lost him take that cup fill my own cup with gun water Friends. I don't want to spoil this friendship. Maybe this guy no knows that I know the drink. So you see, there's, I, I understand what you're saying, and I, I get faced uh, with such challenges, challenges as well. But you know, you, you know what you you know you what you have as your dean, Islam, mm. and know what you stand for. So all those things, I feel like it's your foundation that matters at the end of the Seriously, day. Seriously, it does. You know, I was faced with uh, you know deep blue, deep blue sea before I started as a musician. I was writing songs for some guy, you know, to to get chance to record in the studio. Mm. I'll write a song, and uh, you know, it, don't, it doesn't pay me, it just pays me with um, studio time. time. Mm. And eventually I was hoping that, you know, when he gets to hear my song, he would sign me on. And he had a very big studio, it was the biggest in Africa then, you know. And I would go there, write songs. So when I wrote some nice songs, he, he loved it. But he told me, what he told me was that I, I should compromise my faith. You know, that, wow. yeah, he asked for my prayer, you know. Uh, so the guy that was a condition he made for you. I'm telling you, and, and that was, you know, I was really desperate. He, knew, he saw the desperation because yeah. I would wake up in the morning, follow some of my neighbors, you know, that were going to Secretariat area. I would follow them. I know we get money for transport. I would stay there, right there in front of the AC, chilling like this from morning time till 6 p.m. when they close. Wow. Even if they don't get to see me, I'll just stand there. So they thought that, okay, this guy won't see that bad. You know, but they didn't know, they didn't know that I didn't want it that, that bad. bad. Mm -hmm. You know, so. That, that thing was like a point in my life where yeah, I felt like was a lot that was testing you know me. testing me and I felt like that it was so huge but it was event later on oh. that I met white there okay. in that same studio and when I said no to that offer you know a lot of people looked at me like like yeah. don't they pull you're not pretending to them I'm like I don't smell what I don't eat thank you 
So that's yeah. very important. And that one is one thing that we should also practice as well, I think. Yeah, definitely. I mean, to be honest, like, a lot of times, um, I mean, recently, because L, no, I won't say I've always been on my game, you know, I've, I've been a full practicing Muslim, hey. but, you know, as, 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 as Islam, you, know, you, you don't absorb everything at once. I mean, yeah. as time goes by, and I remember, you know, as I started to get closer and to Allah and deeper in the religion, and makes me feel bad as a as a religion guy. guy yeah. This guy, really, that, that tell me about him. Every morning, man. <laughs> no, Bezos yeah. sends me at least maybe hadiths every morning. That's it. He wakes me up with it. Mashallah, that's very really good. You know, so I mean, I, I started to get close to even people, even the guys, the alcohol beverage company that I, I used to work with. And I just told him that look, I don't drink. I'm tired of because of money. I need to start lying to people, convincing them to drink. I rather just end this relationship, and you know they understood where I was coming from, and like, okay, look, it, to be honest, it's, this guy, he, he, he's growing, in, he's his growing in his faith, and he doesn't want to affect it. You know, and to be honest, everyone is, no one is perfect. There's so many people that, even in the core company, there's some guys that work there that are Muslim. Muslims. But I mean, they're trying to make ends meet. They're trying to make ends meet, so I really don't blame them. I mean, they try to just avoid going to the events, but they try to be more on the. Administrative. administrative part of the business and I, I mean it's, it's I think there are two ways to it you know like we we're discussing before the camera yes. um, is that you avoid it or you be part of it and not be part of it exactly like uh, for me you know I always call myself Benzin Benzano it's when I was in secondary school I, 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 as I call it myself that the element, the element because I use it to describe you yourself know, describe myself and just strengthen myself like yes you can be there and not be there, you know, as as a person, like I started uh, understanding my brand more as I lived in this life as a Muslim, I just understood that, okay, people love Sound Sultan. They don't love, it's not about what I do, you know, about right. or what I do behind the scenes. It's what yeah. they know no, about me. And if I'm comfortable in my own skin, that this is how I live my life. I don't have to be like every musician, True. you know, so I can be the passing puff puff pass. Mm. Those who get it, get it. Get okay. Uh, get I, 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 I did. I did. <laughs> no, I'll still try and get let it. Let me tell you. No, let me just I'll try and get it. Let me just tell you. You see, puff, puff, pass. Now, when they smoke Igbo, <laughs> so when they, when I'm there with other musicians, they be smoking, smoking. Oh, then they puff, not. puff. I tell them I'm the pass in puff, puff, pass, because I'll pass. You like understand? So I'm always there when stuff has been stuff has been done, but I don't have to be part of it. Definitely. You know, definitely. So, but but I, I I think we were discussing. And you said something like. You rather uh, someone in that, that you know would rather stay away from it. From I mean, it. That's yeah. it. That's you see, it, we, uh, the challenges we face are all, all come part of that. We find ourselves in places where are not the ideal for us. Exactly. But the thing that's most is how do we now conduct ourselves when we're there, mm. and how does our faith help us to navigate through those yeah. periods? Uh, you you True. go out, you have an event, and uh, just having alcohol. You know, conference, exhibition. As you said, as people said, they fly you out, mm. they take you to dinner, and next thing, everybody's popping the champagne and feeling good. And expecting, like, ah, we're all in a feel good mood. And, like, no, I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't drink. And they look at you strange. But I think after a while, as people said, they come to understand that uh, this is what this guy believes in and this is what he stands for. So they kind of respect you. They do. In I fact, they respect you more. more. And, 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 they, and they secretly they admire, admire you. you. That's the word. Now, I'll tell you, I traveled once overseas and uh, my company representative we were dealing with, it was during Ramadan. And I, was, I didn't want to travel because I said, how was I going to, you know, relate with them during Ramadan? And it was going to be difficult. They'll be eating, they'll be drinking. Mm -hmm. And when I told the guy that I was fasting, he, they came pick me up from the airport. And they took me back to the hotel. We finished all the discussions and everything. And at 7 o'clock, they came to pick me. They said, oh, we know you are fasting. So we delayed everything to your time for breakfast. So we go have dinner together. Mm. And they said, well, we know since you are fasting, you can't be somewhere in there drinking alcohol. So it was a seafood restaurant. Put out. And I was like, wow, that was really impressive. You know, that they respect you. You let them find out that you don't have to conform to people. You let people know, understand this is yeah. where you stand, and they will it's respect true, you for that. that. This is what I believe in. This is what you believe in. So, as far as you know, that you're not pretending, yeah, that is it. To, to get an advantage. Yes. They know this is who you are, and they respect you for that. And you said they secretly admire you. I said, ah, this guy, he doesn't drink. He's not like us. Or they tell other people, he's not like you. Yeah. He's straight to what he believes in. And you know, even some of them, they try to make fun of you and make you a joke and everything. Mm, but yes. after a while, 
you know, when they say that the joke is the, it's not really, it's the joke is really on them. them. They stop, yeah. they stop cracking. I remember yeah. when it comes to me, I used to drink before. And when I stopped drinking, you know, a lot of people used to always make fun of me and say, oh, look, uh, water, I don't know, he's, he's, he's drinking water. After a while now, let's say, he's drinking water, I drink. So what if he's drinking water? I mean, he wants to live longer. You know, like, the jokes the, now become... The jokes yeah. that you are facing, maybe in the last, how many years now, that you've been clean? <laughs> Two years. Two years. Yeah. I've been facing that joke since I was in secondary school. You know, and, you know, they just be like, you, before you do, I'm, I'm, I'm in the club, and then the people are like, oh, do, do you see lights? Wow! They're hosting you. <laughs> they, they don't bring a bucket of kidney. Then someone just tap the shoulder of it. Then I bring cranberry. Have you something? Cranberry. Red food. <laughs> so you know, they will be like, uh, for who? The mixer. You know, just for him. Just give him. Now someone, I'm very cheap to host. <laughs> so they don't be like, they'll be laughing at us. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. You want to go to the boji 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 you know, I don't, I don't care. But you see, I'm, I have a very, I'm very sorry, but I have a very sore mouth when it comes to say yapis. So that's why, that's what got, got me through secondary school. Because if you want to yap me and try to put pressure, put peer pressure on me, I will yap you. They will laugh and you need the spectacle. So, at the end of the day, man, the yabos, they know yabos. That's what we are, and that's what exactly. we, who we are. Yeah. And we've been struggling through life with, of course, like you said, the dean at the back of our mind to balance our work, work life, business family, everything, and social life. So, like we said, the topic is work-life balance. You know, I'll be, we'll, we'll be back. Welcome back to Metro Mail. My brothers that are just joining us, I say assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Metro Mail is your new show on TV that we are discussing social life, and social issues as it affects us, this very distinguished gentleman here, yes. and our work and our life and our family. So today's topic, like we said, is work-life balance. And um, I, as we are saying before, you know, we're talking about our work and yes, what we do. work ethics and yeah. how it affects our religious yeah. beliefs. beliefs. And let's talk about family for, for instance. Okay. How do you... How do you use Islam and your religion, and as being a Muslim, how do you use it to make sure it reflects on your family life? That's a very good one, and uh, it's a very challenging one. Because right now we live in challenging times. Yeah, mm, that's right. We, we live in challenging times now. Um, one thing I, I decided when I was going to get married was I was going to try and spend quality time with my family because it's very important. I find out now that unknowingly people have said outsourcing yeah, the upkeep and up responsibility of, of looking, looking after the children to your house helps, nanny, drivers and co. Yeah. So they are the ones now bringing up your children for you in the way they didn't fit. Exactly. So by the time you find out it's too late, you come home one day and your child is saying some things that you've never had, you've never said to him or you never taught him. And I wonder, or oh, he's singing some stuff like, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say some things, you know? Yeah. But I'm like, where did you learn it from? I said, oh, uh, this Jenny that says it. Oh, the driver was the one that was speaking. Then when you sit back and reflect, like, most of the time I'm not around these kids. The time I come back, I don't spend enough quality time exactly. with them. Mm -hmm. So my beliefs and my life is not impacting on them. Exactly. And children are like magnets, they soak up information now. Mm -hmm. Moreover, now in this our present age, that exactly. we have That's technology I mean. and information oh at their God. tips, they are so intelligent yes. and so brilliant. So, if you don't uh, spend time with them and impact on their life, you find that your child will not be your child. So what what that, do you do to make sure that? So, what, what we try to I try to do is spend quality time with them. It's not that easy because your work now has taken over as your primary concern. I have to work. I have to get go money. Pay, pay. Yeah, I have to pay school fees. I have to pay rent. I have to pay DSTV. I have to make sure their life is comfortable. Give them the good things. Make them travel for holiday. But they, have you asked yourself what does the child really want? Exactly. You are thinking for the child. The ch all the child wants is to see his dad or his mom and spend yeah. time with. That's all they want. Yeah. It makes him so happy. You know, the greatest joy I get is when you come back home and you see your children. Their eyes light up. Yeah. When they yeah. see you. 
Back yeah, in the so days, we used to do oh yo yo. yo, yo. yo. Hey, that's where you your dad. You, you, thank uh, you, bro. Yeah. You run out of yo yo. Everybody's singing and dancing like it's a carnival. I swear. You saw what I said. What was it? Wonderful Full tradition. tradition. It's it, you know, and I was like, wow. I mean, your, my father was really happy that look, I have people that I love and care for you, and they are so happy to they see. Always you. look forward to going to back home. home. That brings you back home. And look, I have these people that love me and care for me. So I mean, if you want to show them love and care, yes, gifts, uh, mm -hmm. good things of life, all that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, yes, make them comfortable. But your presence is the most important Definitely. to them. Yeah. So we should not neglect that. I, what I try to do is I say, look, I will try to spend as much time with them. I mean, even I'm working, try to find out how they are doing in school. When I come back, sit down and ask them questions. What did you do in school today? Simple yeah. questions like that. Did you like your class? Did you like what they taught you? Who is your teacher? What's her name? Mm. And you find out that those kids are so intelligent. They go back, I, oh, yesterday my daddy was asking me, who is my teacher? What's her name? Mm -hmm. When you go to school, like you find out little things you say to them, they go back. You know, my kids, I always try to, I, I you know, I have a practice with them. I was, I was saving up to get something, acquire something, and every time we'd pray, especially at Subway, we just go oh, and uh, we say prayers, and I'd be like, Allah, please bless me, this is my project, I want, you know, my kids, they kept listening, you know, you don't know they listen. And one day, when a visitor gave my kid some money, she came to me and said, hey, nothing you're saving up for. Uh, I have some money now. Is this okay? Is it enough? <laughs> you know, I was just laughing. Like, see this one with your change, your change money. And I told her, I said, do you know what I want you to pray for, Daddy? Just pray for Daddy for opportunity. You know, this money is paper. You know, I didn't know what I was telling them was sticking there. I said, money is paper. I just took the money. Said, this thing is not what you should be after. After. It should be after our last blessing and opportunity. And open doors. So, so some other day, <laughs> when my small, it was now my son that someone gave money. He just told the person, money is paper. <laughs> I was laughing <laughs> on one side. The person said, what? That money is what? <laughs> Say, money is paper. That's what my daddy tells us. Money is nothing. It's nothing. Money is just paper. See? <laughs> so that thing sticks. You know, eventually you they grow up to know money is not only paper. Shop. But at the end of the day, the message as you know, will drive and build them into being normal and... Uh, a normal Muslim. Yes. You know, not Without just attaching values yes. to those So, Mr. Things. Bizu, we know that you are on your way to being like us, but at Inshallah. the same time, you're single. Inshallah. Inshallah. You're single. Are you single in single? I'm single in single. Because I'm you single. know, there's single. Single in. in there's, there's coupling in single. single. Yeah. So, you're single in single. I'm single in single. You've been, you've been in relationship yeah. um, before now. So, I want to ask you, how do you? You know, make it reflect with your apart from your even your families, mm. your, your extended family, your nuclear family, your your family, your brothers, your sisters. How do you guys relate when it comes to Islam? Okay, to be honest, for me, it's it's funny because I come from a family where my mother is Christian and my father is a Muslim, mm. and growing up, we we practice both religions. Mm. We we had like a Arabic teacher come. To the teachers in the house on, on Sundays after church, I have a teacher will be in my house. <laughs> so, oh boy, that must be a lot. Of the best of both worlds. Yeah. So I mean, growing up, I mean, I decided to follow Islam because I found more joy in Islam. Oh, my really sisters, love. my sisters. I mean, w one of my sisters had always been a Christian. She followed my mom. Then one other one was a Muslim. She got married to a Muslim. But I mean, along the way, you know, she converted to Christianity because my sister convinced her. I mean, I, every day I pray that she comes back to Islam. <laughs> or, well, I mean, her kids, because she's married to a Muslim, her kids are Muslims. So, I mean, every time they see me praying, they come near me, they want to learn as well. Like, and in their school, every Friday, they take them for Juma service. I'm not sure that's so, I mean, so for me, I've come from a, a background of mixed, like, um, yeah. my mother being Christian and father being Muslim. So I kind of have on a feeling of both religions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I decided to go with Islam because it gave me more joy and it made me more happy. So, and I've been in relationships with Christian people where they feel like, okay, because I'm a Muslim, it won't work, it won't this. And I always give an example. My parents have been married for um, close to 40 years now. Like, mm -hmm. and they, everything has been going straight. The religion has never been a problem. They never made us pick, like, oh, uh, you have to do, you have to be a Muslim by force, or you have to be a Christian by force. They are, they, on Sundays, sometimes if my mom is going to church and we were like, oh, mommy, we don't want to go to church with you, we'll wait for our Arabic teacher. She, she would just go to church on her own and not get upset, you know. She, it wasn't compulsion. 
The only thing my mom always asked for was that um, crossover night, 31st. That we yeah, all, you know, we all do prayers together. She'll call her sisters, they'll come to our house, and we'll do prayers together mm -hmm. the Christian way and sing and that. I mean, my dad gave her that because, I mean, one, one day in a year, I mean, it won't kill you. <laughs> won't kill you. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, we gave her that and everything. And during Ramadan, my mother actually fasts with us. Like, you know, she, she wakes up in the morning with us and, and she yeah. fasts. And she just, a lot so, of so my... That, she just like, so that, I mean, she doesn't have to... Yeah, cook. She, for... Cook during the day. So just be think, do things to... Be, I mean, do, please, her husband. Because she's married. This is someone she's married to. True. You know, so those kind of those are things I've learned from there, and also learned like growing up, my mother actually quit her job to be a full time housewife, but she had a business. But she said, but she "How many to raise... ladies out there can do that now?" No, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm, I mean, I'm actually coming to that. Like growing up, like growing up, <laughs> so she could take care of us. Like she had a business, she had a, a shop that was just across the road from our house. So like she, you know, when we were back from school, she had time to take care of us and everything. Mm. But these days, no female, every female wants to be an independent woman. I mean, if a lot of girls these days are thinking about getting nanny, like you said, hmm. nanny is raising your child. If that's not your child anymore, yeah, you just give birth to the child for the nanny to raise. Really. But at the end of the day, they you have no connection. That with is the, child. the most important all you time of their life. You, you think all you, all you do, you, you think is maybe oh, okay, take them on holiday, give buy it, buy them you any toy you have. Do like the parties for yeah, them. Add into what uh, Bisu just said. You see, what we don't know is that children have a memory, and our actions to, to them mm -hmm. and with them last forever. Okay. Some of these children, you wonder why people have difficult relationships with their parents, and some of the parents don't know it's because of some of the actions they did in the past, which they did not know. You don't spend time with your children. When you grow old, you expect that child to come back and be spending time with you. Oh, no, exactly. The child will be estranged from you. It's the one that shows him love. He will that show love to. Exactly. If he, he went out of the way to the school to attend some of those little things that they were having pre recital yes. pro programs. Yeah, they, oh. But yeah, like, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. After a while, he, he feels there's a rejection from the parent. But the ones that fight, look, there was a day they had an open day in school and they had been asking me, I had missed the couple. They did not expect And I said, Inshallah, I was going to make sure I went that day. Apparently, my wife had already gone in the morning before me, <laughs> thinking that I wasn't going to make it. And I showed up. And I go there and say, ah, but they assigned the book. There was only, I said, no, I'm still going. And when my daughter saw me, she nearly flew out. Uh, 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 her face will light up. She nearly like, flew out. Like, you know, she, you know, she, she was so happy. So, I, I can tell that maybe well, well, my mother is not there, much more happy than when the mother. <laughs> okay. you know, you know, she could not believe it. The, the light was there, and I felt exactly. so old. Like, I didn't let her down. So these are little things they remember. You know something funny that, that I actually I don't remember when I was in, in secondary school growing up, like everybody in school knew my dad. Because like my, even though my mom was a housewife, my dad made sure that every school opening day, everything, he came. He took time from work to come to open day. Like you see mothers, because it was mostly mothers that used to come for opening day. My dad used to be the only father. When, when I remember, like, every time they say, oh, everybody say what you do, like, stand up and introduce yourself. My dad used to go, hi, I'm Mr. Shikoya, I'm a full-time house husband. Because most of the women, <laughs> all, all the women were housewives. <laughs> so you say, I'm a full-time house husband. Like, I can never forget, till today, like, a lot of my friends from secondary school, their parents, they always used to, when they, when they see my dad, they're like, ah, full-time house husband. You know, when I was growing up, too, I, I understand how they feel, really, because I was a strong follower of, of, of anybody power that was popular. There was some time in, uh, at the trade fair, you know, they didn't have this yeah, international, yeah. international trade fair. I lost my way and they had to use public announce system to call my name to get back to my family because just because I saw Sonny in Rabo. <laughs> I was working with my family like working with my family. I told the man when I saw him sometime ago, he was laughing. I said, see, see you now. I was working with my family jelly, I just saw Sonny Rabo. I just TV. changed my course <laughs> and I followed him to the stores. Where separate directions. So when the Lanre Fasasi, your family is looking. <laughs> Can you know, then, I, then I, you know, so I, as a kid, I could if I see someone that, that's a musician, I know how I. But yeah, so I went for my face. kids' stuff, and they performed my song. Oh my God! The the the, the kids in the school performed my song. Um, I saw my daughter, she was so, she was so proud that she was shy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I could see it in her eyes and I was there. I, I, I'm always there. You know, I thank God for my work 
there is no mandatory for me to leave home very early, start looking for nine to five and stuff. I just, you know, I work at my own pace and I work from home most time. I have my studio at home. So I have time to go for all these functions. Like visit that, visit that now. I'll be his house husband too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd go there and they always see me. Anytime they need me, you know, I'm always there for them. And the school, they're always, ah, you know this school, they take advantage. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so tired. You know, ah, they come and do this one, come and do that. So I'm always there for them. So the kids, I know how well they, 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 they get all lit up and they are happy when they see the parents. So we need to, we need to find time for our kids. We need to, you know, give them that foundation of Islam. Islam is not by force, force, force. It's something that you make it look funky for them, make it look easy. Easy. Not that we're praying five times daily and you know, it's tedious. No. You see, you know what I told my kids? They wake up in the morning sometimes. I'll come on. Daddy, good morning, Daddy. I'm afraid. If, if you tell me that thing again, I say, come, come, all of you. Don't tell me, Daddy, I'm afraid. You're not praying for me. Exactly. You're not praying, you're not to praying because uh, You're not praying because I, I, I told you to pray. The next time, what you say, Good morning, Daddy. Have you prayed? Better. So yeah, yeah, I told them that. So sometimes they just come. So like two o'clock, they, they, they are the ones that tell me to pray now. So me, I like gross the, my social media, and I'm like, Daddy, it's two. Let's pray. You see them, all of them wet. You already done a blue shirt, and they're waiting for me. I'm like, okay, you know. So I'm always trying to find that balance, so so that I don't because it's the thing of, of the mind. Yeah. And there's something you cannot preach what you don't practice. That is very important. You cannot. If you do not pray and you tell them to pray, pray. they will just be wondering, is it a kiddie thing? Yeah. Or maybe... No, they, are very, they are very smart to ask you, but I, yes. I didn't see you pray today. Eh. A question that has been going on around lately on social media. Mm. What age do you think is right to start like telling, speaking to your kids, giving them sex education? From secondary school or wait till they get to university? No, no. it's secondary school now. No, I, I, don't, I don't know whether it's even... A, uh, whether we should put it in two brackets like that. I think we know our children more than mm. anybody else. So I think they are different, they face different challenges at different mm. times. Puberty. And, yes, puberty. And you have to give them at the age they can understand. You cannot give them something that is more than them. You look at the situation and say, look, this person is going to start facing these challenges. I need to start mm -hmm. giving her to talk. Yeah. And a little dose, so that it doesn't overdose yeah, them. Exactly. There are some very it, wonderful it beats, it beats, yes. So there's some very wonderful books. Yes. Like my sister gave um, her child that is at puberty. Yes. It's a very wonderful book. And it's so kitty friendly, but it hits the point. You just see something okay. like um, you've noticed that your voice is cracking. Don't worry. It's something like, you know, they have all these things, and yeah. then the girls have started growing um, quite taller than you. That doesn't mean, you know, they just have so many things that you can relate with as kids that you can use to guide yourself as you go on in life. Uh, so then maybe the birds and the bees can come later on, yeah. you know, if, if they even fit. You know. Another thing I'd like to point out is, uh, to bring up is, what is the one you said? You have to be very friendly with them. Sorry, I'd like to cut you there because we are going on a break. And when we get back, we'll still be talking and sharing our experience on this issue of work-life balance and how it affects us as Muslim Gentlemen, don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Yes, welcome back to Metro Mail. My name is Sound Sultan. I have here my brothers, and we have been discussing about work-life balance. Now, to round up on this episode, I would um, want everybody to give a piece of advice to our people watching us, our viewers. Uh, what do you think? Um, you can, they can do, you know, to fight the temptations, the challenges that they face at their workplaces um, as Muslims? Well, uh, my own personal opinion or advice is, based on what I've been trying to do, is always try to fall back on Allah. Um, try to know about Islam and uh, be prayerful. You see, the thing is, once you know about Islam, it's not just being a Muslim in my mouth. You yeah. Try to find out about it. And you will find those little shields and there's always an answer. That will always be yes. There's always an answer for any difficult situation. You see, Allah says, "Call on me, and I will answer you." Allah will never shut the door on you. Whatever you've offended Him, whatever you've not listened to Him before, let's call, let's call on Allah, and Allah will be the solution for us. Thank you very much, um, Bizo. I mean, just to add a few things to what he said. I mean, like, there's no, there's no way in life 
that there's no temptation or challenges. It's just about how you handle it. And I feel the best way, like he said, is always to call on Allah, be prayerful. I think when you're very prayerful, there's hardly any room for any temptation or anyone to even tempt you because you're, you're, you're deep in spirituality and it's, it's hard for you to be shaken. Like you, 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 no one can shake you if or, or, or test your faith. When I mean your faith is always be tested. When, but, but when you're deep spiritually and you prayerful and you know you call on Allah and put, use Him as your pillar every time. Like any problem you have, you know there's no need to go to seek anyone to help you speak to Allah. I always tell people speak direct. to Him directly. The, the, the connection is direct. It's not there's no it's not an intercom <laughs> that you call extension. <laughs> No, it's direct number to Allah. Pour your problems in Him and your trust in Him, and He will surely see you through. Thank Trust you so much, my brother. brother Bizo Oshikoya. Now, for me, I would want to tell everybody, this is my own, the creed I live by. I do not just pray when I need something, my people. Let's start understanding that fact. Allah, yes, we pray five times daily. When we, every time we pray, we're all about, oh, we want this, we want that. Sometimes I feel like so many people, the actions that they take and the actions they make are the prayers. You get some people, where people they pray for. They go pray for you every day. They come to you, a fire will be in your house praying for you, and then your actions are not, you know, speaking volumes or you're not doing the same thing that Opposite Islam... The prayer, yeah. I don't know, I'm not God, but I'm telling you that is not as strong as when you are practicing and you're praying and also your actions. You are, you are selfless in your actions. You give, you help. You know, that's the best way to life. And even when you have and when God has provided for you, you should always pray. And then as Muslims, you see in your workplace, as a human being, we all have our differences. So do not be shy. I always say this thing. Every time I host, maybe like an in-house death cell, I always tell my youth, I say, don't be shy to be Muslims. How can you be shy? You have gold and then you are shy to show gold. Uh, you shouldn't hide gold. You should be out, you know, out with it. And then when people, you have to be comfortable in your skin for people to be comfortable with you. Yes. So if you are hiding something, they will, be, they will see a reason why they need to be, you know, they will, they will, be, they will be discriminating you. But if you're in your workplace, from the get-go, you let them know, this is my dean, this is my Islam, 2 o'clock, you're not going to see me, 4 o'clock, you're not going to see me, I'm on my mat. And this, you know, by the time you design that for them, they will, they will conform. And that's how it is. You, you, the temptations will even be less. Because so they will know it will not come your way. They know this is this man, this is what you stand for. And, you know, as a musician, me, I'll carry my first back, my first position back. You know, because I, agree. I, I have a lot of things hovering over in the <laughs> entertainment industry. And I thank God, uh, mashallah, I thank God that uh, we've been able to overcome it. And I congratulate my brother Bizu back into the world of Islam. Mashallah. And uh, I really thank you. It is a wonderful thing to be a metro male in this world today. So it's wonderful and also very difficult and very challenging yes. because yes. it's much different from the world we grew up in. Yes. So we need to be able to adapt. And Islam is always a religion for all times. Thank you. So we, we don't have time again. We will come back again on metro male um, talking about another topic, talking about something very dear to us as Muslim men. Uh, thank you for being here, Bizu. Thank you, Muhammad. Uh, Thank you for having us. Uh, Thank we'll you. be here again. Same faces, same people, usual suspects on Metro Mill. Thank you so much.